has lots of experience in Manchester City. He was at Manchester City between 2011 to this year. So that Hello, welcome to the House United. One stop for everything Manchester United. Of course, the biggest news right now is we have a new CEO in Omar Berada from Manchester City. We got a new CEO from Manchester City. We're going to be talking about that and other headline news coming out from this week. This is a weekly roundup of all the United news. And of course, this new um, CEO the news came out, broke out um, yesterday, and we're expecting more details on that. So let's go straight into everything we have to talk about. This is Dehad United. Of course, we're talking about everything concerning Manchester United. Omar Berada is our new CEO, date of resumption yet to be confirmed but he was um it was at uh, manchester city we got him from manchester city he's uh, their coo chief operating officer for the city for, for the city group that is the, all the the umbrella um um organization that runs all the manchester city and its affiliates and clubs and of course we know that the um manchester city has lots of clubs that um, the, their owners own so he's the chief operating or he was the chief operating officer and he has resigned and um this is the perfect kind of um new ceo we need to have you know previously we have had ed woodward or i've had richard arnold who are accountants or lawyers and didn't know anything about football but now we have a new ceo who um understand the balance between um being successful on the pitch and also being successful financially and in Omar Berada we have a um, lot of experience because he, he, um, he has lots of experience in Manchester City he was at Manchester City between 2011 to this year so that's you can, you can calculate how many years that has been and I was also formerly at Barcelona also so you see coming from having CEOs that do not know anything about running the football club um, to going to someone who wants to find a balance between um the footballing side and the business side is a, is of course is a huge 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 improvement on who, what we have had before and of course um when the news broke out it was said that um, Ineos um were the ones who recommended him and the Glazers agreed um to that um which is very fantastic news to show that there's a kind of partnership between Ineos and the Glazers because uh, we expected that the Glazers were going to be the one to appoint this guy or appoint any new CEO, but out of nowhere, it was Ineos who recommended him and the Glazers signed off on him, which is very, very good. But here's a little clip I want to play um, of um, of him talking about his philosophy and, and the qualities of a leader in his own um, understanding and his own view. And it was a very, very good watch. So here's a clip. Just watch this for six seconds video and you'll be impressed of the kind of CEO we are getting at Manchester United. One of the biggest um, challenges or areas of focus that I face in my, in my role as Chief Operating Officer at Manchester City is the need to find the balance between the football side of the organization and the business side. Um, in many ways, they operate in two different worlds, but the reality is you need to be able to bridge that gap to operate as a unit. In my opinion, the top three qualities that a leader should have is number one, be able to articulate a very clear vision. Number two is really what I call leading by example. I think a leader should be at the forefront of what the team is trying to achieve. And number three is this idea of being collaborative and involving, creating a platform that allows everybody to express their views and to share their ideas will make the team a lot stronger. So yes, that is the mentality of the new CEO we have and we are looking forward to him being in charge at the club and of course we'll be expecting Ineos to also appoint a new director of football and maybe, I don't know, director of football, um, that, that's DOF, director of football that we're also expecting a technical, is he a technical director, what do they call it? There are two roles, a director of football and a technical director or a sporting director I don't know how those roles are going to be filled but we'll be looking for more, we'll be looking at more appointments in the coming days um, so, of course, we we'll look to the future with Omar Berada as the new CEO of Manchester United. And according to the news or the reports, um, he said he can't start at United this season. Um, it will, he will begin his new role either in the summer or next season. But of course, he's already resigned and he has already signed his contract. This was according to Fabrizio Romano, he has signed his contract. 
So we'll be expecting that the strategic review that's ongoing now, he'll probably be a part of it. And also in the summer, he would definitely, I think in the summer he should be in the role and we should um we should kick right into it with our new director of football, with our new CEO, with our new sporting director, whatever it may be. So that is all for that. And um, with all these massive changes that are coming at the club, then we have to think about Eric Ten Hag. What is the future of Eric Ten Hag? Because now we have a new CEO, we are going to have a new sporting director. What are going to be the plans for Eric Ten Hag? What are going to be the plans for the, man for the managerial role? If Ten Hag does not improve on the performances on the, of the team before the end of this season, then of course we'll be expecting him to go. Even if, um, even if the Ineos group didn't really want to sack Ten Hag, now we have a new CEO, we have a new, we'll have a new director of football. What are going to be their um, plan um, for Ten Hag? Because with new um, figures coming at the club, that means new philosophies, new mentality, new plans. What would he want to do at the club? So Ten Hag job is currently in balance because right now anything can happen. Um, it's going to be a lot of um, um, scrutiny on him and his job. So to have a real standing point or a real a real hand on his job, he has to do well with this team. Casemiro is back. Um, Martinez is back. We are having more players back from injury. So we have to kick on and start playing well or else. By June, May, June, July, um, the hand will definitely be gone if things does not um, things does not improve. And also, with the with these um, um, changes coming to the club, we we'll have to think about what's going to happen with Sancho, what's going to happen with Greenwood, and what's going to be our budget for the summer, what's going to be the transfer strategy. Well, of course, we're not going to be spending stupid money on players anymore because if you listen to what he said to. Other clips from Berada, our new CEO, you understand that this guy does not want to spend massive money on any player. He doesn't want to give any player a massive contract. He wants to run the club with a balance. So with this new changes coming at the club, it's going to be really, really, really good to see what happens and with how the, the, the football club is being run now because now we're going to have proper people running the football club and Ineos are making the right decision by appointing the right people to do this job, which is very, very, very important. And so Ten Hag job is definitely on the line if he doesn't improve. Onana also not uh, not playing well. Anthony not playing well. All these all the, most of the, uh, the signings from Eric Ten Hag, some are not doing well in love. And all these players are either was going to get him sacked or save his job for him because at the end of the day, if you look at all the signings he has made and all of them are bad, then it's obvious that probably he doesn't know what he's doing in terms of managing or signing players identifying talent and things like that so everything falls back on uh, fall back on him he needs to come back stronger after this uh, after the afghan tournament and everybody is back we need to start playing well for the next three to four months until the season is over or else ten hag is going to lose his job and of course i don't want ten hag to go but at this stage um you have to think about um the club i support the club i, I back the manager but i support the club and if the performances does not improve then I would want, first of all, not not Ten Hag only going, but also um, the club trying to sell as many dead wood as possible. And there comes the question, how many players do you think would be able to sell in the summer transfer window with this new structure at the club? Because players like McTominay, Maguire, um, Lindelof, um, Bambisaka, I can mention many of them, we need to clear out these players and bring in fresh new players. It's time for many players to go. I wouldn't mind if we sell even high-profile names. I, don't, I, won't, I won't mention any, any names, but I wouldn't mind if we sell high-profile ones. But we need change at this club. And to get full change, we need to sell most of these players that have been here since Jose Mourinho, since Ole. They are not good enough and they need to go. But we'll see after the question, how many players would we be able to sell? Because last summer, we only sold Fred. Yeah, so Fred and who else did we sell? Um, James G no, James Gunner was last two, last was Ten Hag's first summer. So the second summer we sold Fred. I think that was the only player we sold. So now we have to look at how this new structure can affect our transfer business, can affect our um, our how people see us in terms of signing players and signing contracts um, and things like that. So. 
with new or with, with the new um structure of the club would definitely be different would definitely be way miles better than what we have um right now but to, to compete in the upcoming years we need to have a sustained mentality a sustained approach to transfer business a sustained approach to giving players new contracts or signing players for the first time and things like that and we also need to find ways to really bring in money at the club if it's going to be by um signing young talent and um selling them for profit which, which wouldn't be a bad deal that's how man City does and uh, make lots of money by signing these young players giving them some years in the academy and selling them for good money and you see most of them are, are doing good so it's, it's important to find some balance but some of the questions um omar brother would have to face or decisions you have to make is on the managerial role of course not only him, him and, it, and him, him and the um um the director of football and everything um what is going to be the future of everything hag and of course like i said before that future is actually more on his hands than on the ceo's hand if he if he does very well then the ceo, the CEO cannot come in and sack him but if he, the performances does not improve then it makes the decision very easy to let him go and number two sancho what is going to be the future of sancho of course if there stays there's no way that um, sancho is going to play for my united again um so what's going to be sancho's future what did what do you what would um, the ceo would want to do with sancho sancho's on big with his big money so i hope they will probably try to sell him then on greenwood what is going to be the decision on greenwood very very important very very controversial are we going to sell him for profit are we going to keep him he's going to back to the squad that's very very tough decision the ceo and the director of football will have to make and also like i said the new um our new approach and strategy to doing transfer business how um is he going to change that what's he, what's what's he going to do to make our um make the way other play, other clubs see us um or our agents and football and football players see us uh, because now we're like we're like we're like like a laughing stock we want to buy a player and all the body all, all the price the fees are inflated um players want big winners and things like that so the new ceo and the new director of football are the ones that are actually going to stamp their feet on the ground and you know tell any player or club that want to send their players that we're not going to overpay this is how we want to do it if you're not ready then you go we are manchester united the biggest club in the world and we're not going to beg you to come to our club things like that so those are some of the things that the new ceo would have to solve and resolve fast so you can kick on of course the new rebuild is a long one maybe three to five years but we have to kick on immediately and start setting some ground rules because when you lay that strong um foundation that's when um you can build on that and you know success can come out of that so we have a new ceo we expect some news for a new director of football or a technical director or whatever um new rules we expect to see um at the club and let's hope that with the new ceo um we get um, a very bright future and also um, we're able to look for ways to make more money look for ways to um better our finances so that we can you know be active in transfer window because right here right now money brings success if you can't generate wealth you can't win anything consistently you can win it once in a while but we're not a once in a while Premier League winner we have to win it consistently and of course it's a very very huge jump from where we are now but you can get there so that's the roundup for the uh, for this week let's see what happens in the coming weeks definitely definitely the next 10 days five days four days three days two days we're getting an update on who is going to be our new director of football and the biggest hint of who is that going to be is dan aswat um dan ashworth is that newcastle is a british um director of football he's very good at his job he helped rebuild um newcastle too. i think he was at bright was he at chelsea or Brighton? i don't know where he was at, previously but according to fabrizio romano the Ineos group wants him desperately him and no one else they really want him and that could kick on anytime soon let's see what happens with that but yes good news we have a new ceo and we have a brilliant ceo with wealth of experience both at manchester city and barcelona so well, let's see how we can improve how we can go up from where we are right now thanks for watching my name is jude 
and this is that had 90 you want to stop for everything 